Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to share my birth story with you. Um, my son is almost one year old and I wanted to tell this story before all of the finer points start to fade away. I know some of them already have and that's probably for the best, but um, I just really had this urge to go back through the day. Um, my husband had filmed a few clips. I didn't even have a YouTube channel at the time, um, but he'd filmed some video clips just so we could remember things. And I'm so glad he did because I've looked back over them recently and they're just so precious to me. So I'm gonna share clips throughout um, this narrative, so to speak, and um, share, you know, just our how our day unfolded, how we got there, and what my labor and delivery was like. So I was due on July 6th of last year, 2019, and pretty much we thought I was going to go into labor on my own. I'm a very organized and on-time person, and I was convinced that this baby was going to follow suit. And I know that sounds really naive. Um, I know that, especially with your first child, um, things tend to like stretch out a little bit longer. You don't go into labor like right on your date. Um, but I was just convinced. I was like, nope, this is my baby and I like to be organized on time and he's going to be on time. <laughs> um, and of course he wasn't. Um, however, a couple of days before my due date, I went in to see my doctor for my weekly visit and she thought I was going to go into labor that weekend. She was like, things are looking good. You're getting ready. Um, this baby's going to come. And so I really thought that I kind of had it in the bag, but as a contingency, we had scheduled me for an induction um, the Wednesday after my due date. So I was due on a Saturday, and if I didn't go into labor before that Wednesday, we were going to induce. Um, I didn't really think much about induction. I knew that I really wanted to go into labor on my own. Um, and I really didn't think it was gonna have to come down to an induction. I really didn't. But I should know that while this was my baby and you know he might end up being organized and on time in the future, he's also stubborn like me. And he was not coming out. Um, my in-laws had come into town a couple days prior to my due date. So we had them around. They were like a good distraction and good family time. And on my due date, we decided to go to a um, big outlet mall nearby and we just we walked around that mall for four hours on my due date and nothing happened <laughs> like I still felt really good I was definitely moving a bit slower um, but I felt really great from about the fourth month on in my pregnancy and I'm so fortunate to be able to say that um, but no nothing really happened we got back home that night and I had one contraction and it was pretty strong. And we had just, we were just about to lay down to bed. Um, Nick was already in bed and I was kind of fiddling around. I'd wash my face, all that jazz and started feeling it coming on. So I grabbed um, my big exercise ball that I had been like bouncing on for weeks <laughs> trying to induce labor. So I kind of wrote it out on the exercise ball. It wasn't very long. Um, and I had always heard that if you lay down and the contractions go away, then it's not quite time yet. So I went ahead and laid down for bed and slept through till the morning. And I think that every day after your due date just gets worse and worse. <laughs> I, I think I cried every day after my due date and was just really tired feeling and really ready for something to happen. Like I said, my in-laws were in town from out of state and I felt like I needed to you know, have a baby for them so they would have a reason to be there. And I just was so ready to get the show on the road, but I really did not want to be induced. Um, I worked right up until the day of my induction. So I was in the office that week. And of course, everyone comes by your office door. And it's like, oh, still pregnant. Oh, you're still here. You haven't had a baby yet. Ah. And you're like, oh, I'm so ready to have this baby. So the induction was a good thing in that way. But the day before, um, the induction, which was my last day at work, I kind of started freaking out. I realized that I was probably going to be induced in the morning. I probably wasn't going to go into labor overnight. And I just had second thoughts about it. I, you know, there was no medical reason for me to be induced other than the fact that I was technically overdue and my body was ready, um, like physically. So they could induce me, but I just, 
I didn't know if I wanted to go through with an induction or kind of let things ride out on their own, which is crazy because I was so miserable. But I tried to call my doctor the day before my induction and I called kind of late in the afternoon and she'd already left the office for the day. And I said, listen, I really need to speak with my doctor. I have an induction scheduled for the morning, but I just, I didn't really think it through <laughs> when we scheduled it and I have some questions and I kind of want to know why we're going forward with an induction when everything's looking good on this end. And they were like, well, she's already left for the day um, and she won't check in until 6 a.m. in the morning. And I was like, well, I have to be at the hospital at like 5 or 5.30 a.m. That doesn't really help me. And I hadn't been a high maintenance patient at all. I hadn't called her outside of my normal um, appointments and I was like, God, oh, come on, this is the one time I need to speak with her. <laughs> can you not get a hold of her? And she was like, no, um, but you know, I can let you talk to the on-call doctor, which I guess doesn't help you very much. And I said, no, I, I need to talk to my doctor. And she goes, I'm really sorry. And I said, well, I guess that's that. So I kind of hung up in a huff. I was probably a little bit attitude -y with her thinking back to, um, you know, pre-birth Christina, but it was just where I was at. I just, I had thought so much about going into labor on my own and how I would handle it. I had listened to a hypnobirthing course and I didn't really have any aspirations of going through the whole labor unmedicated, but I did have a plan for um, early labor at home and, you know, had kind of envisioned it a certain way. I didn't have a really detailed birth plan either, but again, I, I think I realized that I had more of an idea of how I wanted it to go than I had planned on. So I went home that night. We actually, I think we went to a movie that night. I think we went and saw, I know we saw Toy Story 3 and I think it was the night before my induction or maybe it was the night before that. But anyway, we kind of had like a last date night for a while and went to bed and we had to wake up around 3 a.m. to call the hospital and make sure that there was a bed for me. And so we woke up really early the next morning called the hospital and they said, no, we're not ready for you yet. Call back in a couple of hours. So of course, ugh, your sleep's ruined at that point. I've woken up at 3 a.m. I'm sitting here thinking about having a baby that day. Um, but I stayed in bed. We tried to get a little extra rest and then called a couple hours later and they said, yes, go ahead and come on in. Um, but they didn't seem really confident that they had a bed. This was There was kind of a baby boom at my hospital at that point in time, or at least that's what my doctor told me. It was just a really busy few days for them. And so, you know, beds were in high demand. And so just because they didn't sound too certain, I kind of took my time getting to the hospital. I think we still ended up getting there around 6.30 or 7, but certainly didn't rush. And I'm glad we didn't because we got there and we waited till 9 a.m. for a bed. And, you know, again, like it's first come first serve. There were several other ladies in the waiting room um, who were there to be induced, I could tell, but I was still feeling really conflicted about being induced. I didn't know why it needed to be done. There was nothing medically wrong with me or the baby that necessitated it. So I just, I was feeling kind of pushed into this induction, even though I could have absolutely walked out of the waiting room at any point, and I almost did. Um, but yeah, I was just really torn about it. And, you know, I guess, like I said, I had watched so many like home birth vlogs, which was silly because I was in no way having a home birth, <laughs> but they were just so beautiful and so natural or so they make it seem. And I just didn't really like the idea of, you know, a medicated chemically induced birth. I don't know. It was just something I was hung up on in pregnancy. I definitely think I would view it differently if I had another child in the future. But we sat there for so long that I started kind of getting spooked again. And I swear I was so close to walking out of that waiting room and they finally called my name. <laughs> and so I was like, well, they have a bed for me now. They're all ready for me. Um, my doctor had been watching on her phone to make sure I got a bed. So I knew she had scheduled me in for the day. Um, so I just kind of went along with it, but I was walking down the hallway with two incredibly nice nurses and they're like, okay, so why are we inducing you today? And I said, you know, I don't know. <laughs> we just had put it on the books, um, as a contingency and here we are, you know, I'm about four days overdue and they said, oh, okay, you're, you're ready, you know. Um, 
And so I got all settled in the room and this is kind of where the video clip starts. So I'm gonna put the video clip in here. I think the first one is of Nick just kind of exploring the room while I was getting changed in the bathroom. Here we are, ready for Ivan. This is the room. Mama's in there getting ready. We probably won't be using this, but it's kind of cool. Mama's ready in a nice gown. Who is that? This is nobody. Oh. Well, it's a <laughs> video. Like, is <laughs> this is where I will be resting. This is where Mom will be resting. And this is where, he, where Ivan will be resting. First diaper. His first diaper. Brought to you by Pampers. So yeah, we had gotten all settled in. They'd had me change into a hospital gown. I'd actually bought my own, one of those cutesy ones, you know, was, um, like light blue with polka dots and it came with a matching pillowcase. <laughs> and so I put that on, they said that was fine and kind of sat in the bed for a few minutes. And um, they came to put the IV in and it took them so many tries. I had a nurse who had just transferred from postpartum care down to labor and delivery. So she was still kind of fresh on, I mean, I feel like you might have to do that in that department too. But she did, she let me know that she had just started in that department and so, um, I kind of knew what I was up against, but it really, it took them like four or five times and they kept switching arms. So, um, I will say they were all very gentle and I wasn't like in excruciating pain, like crying out or anything, but it, they finally called in a kind of a more, I guess a more seasoned nurse and she came in and like got it on the first try. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I had like huge bruises on my arms for weeks after that. Oh my goodness. But they finally got that in and they started the Pitocin. And eventually my doctor came by to check on me and she broke my water. Um, so <laughs> I am going to put in a clip right here of me kind of whew, chilling out after getting the IV put in and kind of getting settled into the bed. Yeah, That's right, going to help me feel better. How's mama feeling? Good. I thought you were taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Videoing now. Oh gosh. Are you going to do this all day? All day. Great. Hooked we didn't up, talk about this beforehand. Up to the monitors. Here's what you're doing. 139 or 34 BP, so 117, 74. Intake output, resolution, vital signs, three days. Yeah, this is not what he's talking about. But here we are. Got the IV in, took a few tries. Once on that arm, once on that arm, and then the third time on that arm. <laughs> <laughs> so the next few hours was just kind of us playing the waiting game. That's when I wasn't really in much pain yet. I was starting to feel the contractions. Um, and, but I wasn't, you know, like incapacitated at that point so my mom and dad had gotten there early that morning so they came in and visited and we chatted for a few minutes and then my brother got there and he came in and said hello and we were it was just kind of a pleasant time um it got to about 11 11 30 a.m and one of nick's good friends um ubered him some hot chicken from his favorite restaurant that was down the road from our hospital so we have a clip of Nick's hot chicken and just sort of me and my mom visiting. I think in this clip actually I was um, drinking one of the lemonade slushes that the hospital gives you. They'd come in and said that baby seemed a little bit tired. I don't know if he, I don't know if his heart rate went down or if he was just kind of not moving much, but they wanted me to just put some sugar in my body and wake him up. So my mom had a, a lemonade slush with me and um, he started perking up pretty soon after that. So Uncle Thaddeus dropped uh, or uh, ordered some hot chicken for me. And mm -hmm. we got Grandma here. Hi. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and Mom. Drinking some, what is it? Slushy. Lemonade slush. Lemonade slush. Either way. And one for Oh, yeah. yeah. 
So it wasn't long after this time um, and I started feeling a little bit worse. The contractions started getting a little bit stronger and I was having to move around in the bed a lot um, to get comfortable and kind of breathe through the contractions. Again, I was trying to use hypnobirthing techniques. I don't know if I was doing it right, probably not, but I was really attempting to go as long as I could without an epidural just so I could kind of be present and I don't know, like I said, I had this idea of me being all at one with my body and, you know, having kind of a somewhat natural birth. Um, but it just wasn't unfolding that way. And I didn't, I wasn't disappointed in that. I just had to kind of re-gear in my head. So they had put the straps on me that have the monitors that were monitoring um, Ivan. And as I wiggled, I kept like knocking off the straps and they were like, listen, we're not really getting a good read on your baby. And since we're giving you Pitocin, we need to continuously monitor him. And I understood that, like that made total sense. So they tried to get a more mobile monitoring unit on me. They had like a Bluetooth one that hooked up to a laptop and had these like things that could go on your big belly and they tried to get that hooked up um, so that I could move around a little bit more. I'd asked for an exercise ball. So I was sitting on the side of the bed, like rolling around on an exercise ball, trying to get through it. And they're like, listen, this, this mobile monitoring unit is just not working and we're not getting a read on your baby. It's been like an hour now and we haven't got a read on him. You know, we're going to have to have you get back up in the bed and we're going to have to strap um, the monitors back on you and you're gonna have to be more still and I was like, how am I supposed to be still? I'm getting more and more uncomfortable by the minute. I needed to be able to move around and the only other option was a monitor that they like put up inside you and stick on the top of your baby's head and that seemed more of like a, an emergency situation. They, they had offered that they could do it, but I didn't really want to do that. I didn't want anything stuck on his head um, while he was still in the womb. <laughs> so they kept talking about the epidural. They were like, yeah, that's, that's the good thing about the epidural is if we have to, you know, keep monitoring you, at least that'll help you stay more still. And I just was really not in the mood to get the epidural yet. <laughs> I had wanted to see how long I could go and really try and work through some of the pain. It was just what I had planned for in my head. But again, I knew that the health and safety of the baby was most important. So eventually I said, let's go ahead and do the epidural. You're not getting a read on him. That's not what we need. I'm not trying to be difficult. Um, so let's just go ahead and do the epidural. So um, they brought the epi epiduralist. No, no, that's not the word. It's, is it a, a nurse anesthetist that does an epidural? I don't know. The epidural technician came in. She was very nice. And um, we did the epidural. It wasn't nearly as bad as I had imagined it. I, as a first time mom, um, was a little bit concerned, you know, can I be still enough for an epidural? Cause you hear horror stories about people like wiggling and things going wrong. And you know, you know, you have to be really still, but you're kind of getting uncomfortable and you're wiggling. So it went great, honestly. And um, at that point I got really cold afterwards. So there's a clip here. Um, that I'm gonna put in Nick was kind of I think catching his breath because it was kind of a whirlwind of You know, we're not getting a monitor on the baby. We're not getting a read on the baby. We need to do the epidural Okay, now you've got the epidural, but you're freezing so they had piled all these blankets on me and um, They turned the lights down so I could try and get a little bit of rest. So I'll put that clip in here She's doing good. Just got the epidural Trying to get some rest Doing pretty good. That was quite a whirlwind, but it's doing better. So yes, I had the epidural. I knew I probably would get one this whole time. Um, I just thought I would be able to wait a little bit longer, but no, and that's okay, that's fine. I was okay with it. Um, and at that point we turned on, I think we tried to turn on the TV and watch Friends. We brought a um, fire stick with us and we were kind of halfway watching Friends and I was also just shutting my eyes trying to get a little bit of rest because we'd been up since so early that morning. And after that, I kind of lost a couple hours. My blood pressure dropped pretty low, which is common with an epidural. Um, so 
something went off and the nurses came in to check on it and they had to administer something. I, I mean, I'm not in the medical field at all. So they had to give me something to help regulate my blood pressure. And I think they said that usually after one or two shots of this stuff, things tend to even out, but they had to give me four. So it was, I think I would like, was being pretty stubborn with it, I guess. And I had had what I would consider a lower blood pressure than normal when I was pregnant. And doctors would keep commenting on it. They're like, your blood pressure is amazing for, you know, a pregnant woman. And I said, guys, for some reason it's better when I'm pregnant here than when I'm like just normal everyday Christina. Um, I don't have a bad blood pressure, but it was definitely running a little bit lower than normal. So I wasn't really surprised that I had that reaction and it took them a while to get it to come back up. Um, they did have a, another specialist come in and he had like a bag of ice and he kept putting it around my body to see kind of where the epidural began and ended. And he ended up telling me that the epidural was a little bit high whatever that means in medical terms, it kind of makes sense. Um, so that was the issue there. And then I know I got sick one time, but I was seriously so loopy that I didn't even care. Like, I mean, no one loves throwing up, I don't think, but I know I got sick, but I was kind of like, oh, well, you know, fine. And I really, I lost two or three hours there <laughs> while they were trying to get it fixed. Um, yeah, I was really loopy. And then after that, things settled down, things looked better. I think I'd given up trying to rest. Um, and my doctor came back in to check on me and she said, you know, I fully expected to come in and, um, you know, check you and then come back later this evening to deliver your baby, but you're ready to push now. So it was around 6 p.m. at this time. See, there's like a whole chunk of time that I don't remember, but I know I wasn't like, having blood pressure troubles that whole time because that that couldn't be good. I really, I don't know where the time went. I will say that my labor went by way faster than I had expected it to. I had packed all sorts of like crossword puzzle books, Sudoku, all sorts of activities for Nick and maybe me to do while we were waiting and we didn't use any of that stuff. We, like I said, we turned on the TV because we had the fire stick and I started watching Friends reruns, but that was about it. So she came in and told me that I was ready to push and I feel like that's when all of my emotions hit and I just started crying, happy tears and maybe kind of panicked tears that this was it. This was when we were gonna start really bringing Ivan into the world. It was time and I think that's when the emotions really took hold of me. I expected them right when he came out and you know, I, I had envisioned them laying him on my chest and me having like that moment, but it really was more so emotional when she told me that it was time to start pushing. And I was like, I'm really sorry, I just, you know, it's here, I need a minute. She's like, no, I understand, I understand. So we had a few minutes while they like got the room ready and robed up and everything. And me and Nick just kind of spent some time together and we're like, oh gosh, this is it, this is it, we're, he's coming, you know. So yeah, I pushed for about an hour, um, I think, from what it sounded like, I was really fortunate to have my doctor there the whole time I was pushing. I think normally they don't come in until you're about to like push the baby out. But since she was already there, you know, she was there kind of helping things along the whole time. And I really loved my doctor. I, I really love her now. Um, so I was really thankful that after my freak out the day before about being induced, that she was able to be there the entire time I pushed. And like I said, after about an hour, he was born at 7.15 p.m. on July 10th, and he was eight pounds, 1.4 ounces, I believe, and 19 inches long. I think he was longer than that. Nick said he didn't really feel like he was very stretched out on the little measuring mat. And when we went to the doctor like a few days later, they said he was 21 inches tall. So I'm like, I don't think he shot up two inches in three days, but I I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. Comment below and let me know if that's physically possible for a baby to grow two inches in three days. But he was healthy. He was perfect. So thankful for that. Um, I had minimal tearing, but they were kind of patching me up and they laid him on my chest and he was, he didn't cry right away. And we were kind of like, Ooh, is he all right? And they were like, he's fine. He's fine. He's all right. And they were kind of rubbing him and cleaning him off and Nick later said that he didn't realize that 
Ivan would come out looking kind of purpley blue. And so he was more concerned than I was for him at least. I did want to hear him cry or make a noise or something. So I was just holding him on my chest going, Ivan, Ivan, <laughs> Ivan. <laughs> Hoping he would somewhat recognize my voice just from, you know, me growing him for nine months. And then he eventually did make a little squeal cry sound and we all kind of, oh, he's okay, he's great. And yeah, from then on, it, I, this things I remember very clearly. I, you know, like I said, there was like a four or five hour stretch where I lost everything. And from that point on, I still remember things very well. And like I said, they got me patched up, gave me an ice pack. Oh, it was amazing. And I was just laying there holding Ivan. And at that point, Nick left the room to let everyone in the waiting room know that he had been born and everything was okay. By this point, I had a ton of family in the waiting room and I'm so thankful for that. But apparently we kind of took over the premises, which I expect nothing less from my family. And so there was quite a few people who had hung around to get a first peek at him. So Nick started bringing in our family members and that was just the most incredible feeling and I was so proud and um, so excited for them to see him and they were just so sweet and um, I remember my mother-in-law came in and like patted my head and said good job and I was like thanks <laughs> like, it just felt so good to have him with us finally and it took them a couple of hours to get a room ready for us. The postpartum floor was a couple floors up. So we kind of hung out in the labor and delivery room for a little bit. Um, we had some one-on-one -on -one time. We did skin to skin. Both me and Nick had an opportunity to do that, which was great. And then they make you get into a wheelchair, an uncomfortable wheelchair, and hold your baby as they wheel you up to the postpartum floor. So. That was not a fun ride. Ivan had started crying at that point and because he was hungry. So we got up to the postpartum floor and got him something to eat. And then the nurse, oh, I had the most amazing nurse. Her name was Lindsay. I don't know her last name. I should, I should find her because I will never forget her. We still talk about how amazing she was. And um, Lindsay was about to kind of leave us be for the evening and let us get a couple hours sleep. And we were like, wait a second, I haven't eaten in a long time so it had been about 24 hours and so she's like oh my goodness okay and the kitchen had like a late night menu and we ordered a chicken quesadilla and french fries and cookies and it was like the best thing i've ever eaten i'd heard that like it doesn't matter what you eat after you give birth like it will taste like the most amazing meal you've ever had and it was so true and i had a diet coke which is not like me i don't usually drink caffeine of any kind after like 4 p.m. And I was like, give me the Diet Coke. I need a Diet Coke. And I was so tired. It didn't make any difference at all in my sleep. Um, but yeah, it was like a really amazing meal. <laughs> Very gourmet chicken quesadilla and french fries and cookies. Um, and then after that, we did. We kind of settled in for the evening. Um, I can just remember... Ivan Lang, they have that like clear bassinet bin thing that they put them in and he was next to me and I was on the bed and Nick had like a little fold out futon over in the corner. So he was really close by too. Um, but I think I woke up every five minutes just to check on him because I mentioned this in my top picks for moms with anxiety video, which I will link below, but we did not bring our outlet monitor to the hospital. And I really wish we had, because I was just so afraid that he would stop breathing at some point in the middle of the night. So I woke up every five minutes to look over at him, but his face was the sweetest face I've ever seen. And I'm sure that's how every parent feels, especially that first night with them. But I just couldn't stop looking at him. He was just magic to me that night and he still is but I just couldn't get over it and it was like Christmas and our wedding day and all the good things all the good experiences combined into one night and it was just so incredible um so we we got a good amount of sleep that night we did wake up every what is it two or three hours two and a half hours to feed him um as you have to do because their stomachs are so small but otherwise we were able to get sleep in between because he was just sleeping so heavily from the trauma <laughs> of being birthed i guess and 
so the next morning rolls around and oh, he was just so sweet and sleeping so soundly we had breakfast brought in and um, it was kind of like being in a hotel at that point I I tell people that the hospital portion of delivery is kind of like um, the honeymoon <laughs> for you and your spouse or your partner and the baby because you're not really having to like do laundry, do dishes, do anything other than try and rest a little bit, keep the baby fed and well, and you know, try and get your strength back. So normally I um, don't share clips of Ivan's face on this channel, but I am gonna show this like morning after clip because he's just too beautiful for me to not share with you. Um, and it's just a really sweet clip of him sleeping and us kind of um, chilling out and having breakfast and figuring out how to be parents. Okay, take two. Here we are on 7-11. It is uh, eight forty almost. Wait, yep, sorry. And your dad is really smart. And uh, here's you. You got your nice swaddle with pop of color <laughs> and your new nice cool beanie. And here's Mama. How are you doing today? I'm good. Yeah. Feeling good? Yeah. We just ate some food. Drink coffee. I'm still working on mine. Mama's done. I'll eat those eggs. <laughs> and you ate 15 milliliters of your formula. Like a champ. Just downed it. Downed it. Here's a beautiful s skyline. Which best window is. Hiccups from me, I can tell you that. So, anyway, that was his first full day on planet Earth. Um, we had a lot of visitors that day, and it was almost as good of a feeling as the night before of just being able to show him off and just be proud. And I think that that's really important to kind of soak that time in if you are fortunate and blessed enough to have a baby who's healthy and well and you're able to take visitors it um, it really is kind of the fun part of being a parent because you get to show off the fruits of your labor and everyone um, wants to hold him and tell you how cute he is and tell you how great you look for just having a baby and even if it's a lie you believe it that's fine um, and it was just a kind of a really magical day. It felt like Christmas day. It felt like our wedding day where we just had all the people who love us the most coming in and supporting us and celebrating our new arrival. So I stayed in the hospital two nights um, and then we were able to go home and kind of get life started as a family. But I had such a positive birthing experience even with my um, hesitance to get the induction early on, I, I think it was truly for the best. I think it was what was supposed to happen for our family. And I have no regrets. And I was so grateful for the amazing nurses who helped us through those first 48 hours after having a baby. And like I said, Lindsay, I will remember you forever if you're out there. If someday you see this, it was you who got me through it. You took such good care of me and such good care of Ivan. Um, and we just had such an amazing experience. And I hope that if we have another baby that we are able to have that good of an experience. But I don't know if you can really top it. It was very uncomplicated. Um, there was never any moments of panic throughout the labor, maybe a little bit when my blood pressure dropped, but 
again, if anyone was panicked, I didn't know it because I was out of it and they were such professionals that they just came in and did what they had to do to make me feel better and everyone stayed safe. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I fully admit that telling this story was kind of selfish on my part just because I wanted to reminisce about the day because his first birthday is coming up in less than, oh, exactly two weeks from today. So I am just, I can't believe the year has already passed because I will say those first few months felt very slow. Um, we were very tired. Um, I had a lot of anxiety. I had postpartum depression. Um, but then around month four and five, things just really started clicking and I started really having fun being a parent and the time just flew from then on and here we are and he's amazing and he's developing well and he really wants to walk soon and it's just the biggest gift that I've ever been given and I hope that if you're watching this and you are not a parent and you feel it in your heart that you want to be a parent and you're not a parent yet <laughs> and maybe you're having difficulties with fertility or it's just not quite the right time I hope that your time does come and I hope that you get to experience what my husband and I have been able to experience over the last year with our son because it is the biggest gift I have ever been given in life and I am now more confident and happier than I have ever been simply by being his mom and I hope that if in your heart that's what you feel your life like your life direction is I hope that you are granted this privilege that we've been granted um, and just know that I always hold a space for you in my heart and hope the best for you and your family anyway thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it um, I hope that if you're pregnant it kind of helps you envision more what it's like to give birth in a hospital setting especially um, and I hope that you will subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will talk to you next time. Bye.